I'm going to be speaking about the word inherent and that there's an inherent power that we have as believers. And it's something that we need to understand and know. And, and so many times, um, you know, we, we go through life and we, and we don't realize or, I guess, relegate these, these things that God has created us for or placed in us because we don't understand what he's created us to do, to be, how to live. And, and I'm not saying you guys don't do it right. I'm just saying I hope today to encourage all of us, myself included, because I got I to gotta preach this stuff to myself too, that, that God has created us to do great things. He's created us to move in power, to move with his spirit, to, to move as he moves. And so this word inherent, see, I, I, in the first service, I thought I had the definition and I couldn't really find it in my notes, but you guys got it. So if you want to, you can spread it around to those that you knew were in the first service so they get the definition too. I told them to look it up, but we'll, you know, see if that actually happened. But this word in, inherent, it means existing as an essential constituent or characteristic. Existing as an essential characteristic or constituent. Now listen to this. Because when we come to know Christ, there are things of him that become part of us. That he is in us, that he is ready to move in us. And we and we can say, well, I don't I don't know if God wants me to. Well, are you part of his family? Do you know him that he wants you to move in his power. He wants you and has called you to do great things, to share who he is with those around you, to be a part of what he's doing in this world. That is what he's called you to do. That's what he's called all of us to do. And it's an inherent power that he wants to move in through us. It's essential. Existing. I love that. It says existing. It's there. It's not something that has to be, you know, worked up in us. It's not something that he's, you know, he's like, hey, maybe 20 years down the road, you know, you'll move in power. No, we can. When we come to know him, we can move in that power. Amen? I don't know about you, but I get excited about that. He has called us to move as he moves, to move in power. We must understand the truth of who we really are. And the enemy, he tries to hide it. He tries to, to you know, sneak his way in and, and speak things that aren't the truth. Like, well, God maybe doesn't want to work with you. Maybe somebody else. Anybody else kind of had those things come up in your head? I, I know you don't want to raise your hand. I'll raise my hand. That we all go through these times where like, well, maybe it's not me. You know, maybe somebody else should do this. Or maybe God's calling somebody else to, to do this thing. And we do have our, all of us have our own callings by God to move and, and to do great things. And, and for me, it's different than you, but we all are called to do great things. And as he's calling us, are we understanding the power that he is endued in us? The authority that he has given us. Not because you've worked up this thing, you know, you've worked real hard. I've worked out a couple of times. Yeah, woo, I'm... No, that's it. No, it's not like that. He's given us his spirit, placed his spirit inside of us. Whenever you come to know Christ, he says, I will give you my spirit. My spirit has everything I have in you because you have my spirit has have everything that I have. I want to use you to do great things. I love Micah, the prophet in the Old Testament, and he's, he's in this time where, you know, there's all kinds of fro false prophets and, and all this mess going around, and, and you could imagine. Look, I mean, I could even say it's, it, it, you could relate it to today. There's lots of stuff that may, may make you think that like, whoo, I don't know if I could step out and speak strongly in this situation. But here in Micah 3.8, he says, but truly, 
I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sins. See, his testimony was a testimony of, I am filled. Not just, I, hey, God's given me a little bit, a little bit of power, a little bit of strength. But he stepped forward in boldness saying, I am filled with his power. Like filled, like not, you guys, you understand, to be filled is, is, is full. No room for anything else. I got no room to be weak or to, to back down or be, you know, just weak-minded. I am full of his power because of his spirit that is in me. And I can declare justice. I can speak boldly. And as we come to know Christ, that is our story too. But we can, we can box God in or relegate him to different parts. God has, has no boundaries. He, he has no lack. There's, there's no stop in him. But we can stop him or relegate him to different pieces of our life or different sections and say, God, well, I want you to move in my life as long as it fits into my schedule, you know, because I'm really busy for the next couple of days. Or maybe, God, if you move in my life, but, you know, just this area, you know, can you take this area and, and really help me to, to be stronger in this area? But, but this other stuff, I'm cool with, you know, it's okay. But God says, I, I have come to take you to great things, to lead you in power and, and into the greatness of, of what I've called you to do and who I've called you to be. And that takes just everything. I know it sounds a lot, but, but if you understand that when we give him everything, that he gives us everything. He's given us everything, but we allow him to use us in every way so we can move in so much more of his strength and his power. And it's not ours. See, in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. By my Spirit, says the Lord. It's not because we are so great. We have to understand that, that in these things, no matter what it is, what thing in our life we're moving in, that it's because God has graciously given us the strength to move in that. And it's not by might, not by my might, nor by my power, but by the Spirit of God, we can move in great things. Because I, I mean, look, I, I work out a little bit, but I know my strength or my mind can be limited, but God is not limited. If we, we each, we, we've got things in our life that, that, you know, that are our limits. But the great thing is with God, with his spirit, those limitations are just wiped away because we can move in him. I mean, there's story after story after story of people doing great things because they've just submitted their self to do what God has for them that they could have never done without his help. In Acts 1.8, it says, but you shall re receive power, dunamis, power, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. See, Christ spoke this and he said, look, I, I, I've, I've got to go to be at the right hand of the Father. I, I'm going to go. And there's a plan that the Father has laid out. But you have to know that the Spirit of God is coming and He's your comforter, He's your helper, He's everything that you need. And the better thing is, is that, that now the Spirit, my Spirit can reside in you instead of just walking next to you as I am. But this is a whole plan so God can change your heart and change your nature 
See, this dunamis, this power, let me read the definition of that one. It says, inherent power. Power residing in a thing by virtue of its nature. By virtue of its nature. And just like I said, as we come to know Christ, we are changed. We are made new. And by virtue of our new nature, we have the power of God residing in us to move in his power. It's there. He's there with us. That power is an inherent power. Residing in us by virtue of our new nature. By virtue of our following God and becoming made new. His spirit resides in us and our nature is changed and his power is with us. See, Jesus was declaring to us, he says, listen, you guys don't understand. It's like as, as, as I have done here, you've seen me to do these wonderful things because I'm following the Father and what he's speaking. I don't do anything of my own but what the Father asks. And as I follow him in this plan that he's, that we've laid out, that he's laid out before me. It is only going to make things better. That you, that I, that we could be changed. That the Spirit could reside in us. In Matthew 16, verse 16 through 19, I give you a little backstory. And Jesus is in Caesar. Caesarea Philippi, and, and he's got his guys around him, and, and, and they're in this place, and you can imagine, they're looking over this place where, where there's idols, there's temples to false gods. I mean, there was a God for everything. It's like this carpet is a God. Let's worship the carpet. Let's worship that chair or that cow or whatever. And there's so many different things that they're worshiping, and he's taking this moment in this place where they're overlooking all these different gods and, and people worshiping all these different things. And he says, who do people say that I am? And they say, so, well, so, I mean, some say you're Isaiah. They say you're a prophet, you know, John the Baptist. There, you know, there's all kinds of things that people say of who you are. And then he turns and he says, well, who do you say I am? Who do you say that I am? And I think this is a pivotal moment because there's something in this exchange that brings the power of God in our lives. So what happens? Simon Peter answered and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There's something that happens here. See, he's asking, who do you say that I am? Whenever we see him for who he really is, we see the reality of who he is, the Christ, what the cross has done. I believe he asks us and he says, who do you say that I am? And when we come to this moment where we say, you're Christ, you died for my sins. You went to the cross so that my sin and my shame could be taken from me so that I could be made new. So that my nature, that sinful nature, could be made new. Yes, we've got to walk forward in, in this life. And, and we, we aren't perfect, but he has made us new. So that we could be a part of the family of God. He says, who do you say that I am? 
Simon says, you're Christ. He says, listen, this isn't some worldly knowledge that has, has allowed you to understand this, but this is God. He has been able to speak to you and to reveal this to you. See, sometimes we feel like we can't understand. I mean, sometimes we, we get into the Bible like, God, I just, I feel like, I feel like it's not coming out in, 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 I'm not getting it, God. But we have to understand that it's not us. And our understanding that is bringing revelation as we read the scripture if I read it on my own and, and, and without help by the Spirit of God, I'm, I'm just going to be reading stories. But this is, this is Spirit-filled God words that is ready to reveal. And if we come and say, God, I come with your Spirit residing in me. God, reveal these scriptures to me. As I read these scriptures, don't let it be me that's, that's trying to get revelation, but allow your spirit to reveal and, and, and bring things up to me. God, I'm made new. Your spirit is inside of me. And your spirit knows what these words mean. Your spirit knows the hidden meaning. See, the, the scriptures, it says that, it's, that there's mysteries that have never been known before, but we get to know them. Those mysteries have been revealed because of the work of the cross and the spirit residing in us. And he will help us to understand these things. But as he says, you are Christ, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Jesus speaks to him, he says, first of all, I'm gonna change your name. You're a rock. You're stability. You have understanding. And secondly, on this rock, I will build my church. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What does it mean? I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He says, I'll give you the keys. Did anybody just throw out keys to their house, to people? It's like, hey, here, come into my house. I don't. But you know, whenever I give somebody a key to my house, you know what that means? It means that I give them permission. I give them authority to use, to be a part of what my family is doing. I don't do that for all kinds of people, but I have done that for people. See, I see, I give them the power to come in and be a part of what's happening. To walk freely in that. And Jesus says, listen, whenever you come into my family, when you know, when you understand what the cross has done, when you ask me into your, into your life to be a part of your life, you become the, my family. I give the keys. I give you authority to move in the power that I move in. I give you authority to move in the things that I have. But so many times do, do we forget that we have the keys? Do we forget that God has given us that power and authority to move? He says to bind. If you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. If you loose on earth, you'll be loose, it will be loosed in heaven. He's allowed us to be a part of those things. He says these things that I've done here on earth, you will do those things and you'll do greater. You will go on because the spirit will reside in you. You will be able to move forward as, as a multitude of people and go out and speak and move in power like I've moved. That's who he's called us to be. Ephesians 1.17, it says, 
that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of his glory and his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe? Wow. My prayer is just like in this scripture is that that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, that our heavenly father would reveal to us and open up our understanding to move in the power that has been granted to us who believe. He has given us the authority to bind, to loose. He's given us the, the authority to move as he moved on this earth. And what did he do? What authority did he move in? He moved in power to heal the sick. He moved in power to, to cast out demons, to, to speak to spirits that they would be moved, that they would be thrown out and they were. He moved in power to speak to nature, to storms, to stop. And he has endued us with this same power because he resides in us. And I'm not saying like we're going to go out and be like, well, it's a nice day, but like it's storming. It's like, I don't want rain. Father God, remove the, remove the rain. But I know that there have been times and in, in times where there's storms and there's tornadoes and, and hurricanes coming and people have stood together and prayed that that thing would not come and touch their house or their church and that storm turn away or dissipate. See, Jesus moved in that. Why can't we? Again, I'm not saying flippantly going out and doing that, you know. Like I'm getting hot, God, just send a cloud and rain on me, you know, just, you know, rain a little bit. It'd be cool me off, you know, because I don't believe that that's moving in, in his spirit and in his footsteps. But whenever he's calling us. Why? Because of his compassion. Because he wants to save us and to help people that he will use us to do those great things. Not because of my strength, not because just because of our will, but his will that those things will be done. Paul said, I want you to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Do you understand that that spirit of wisdom and, and revelation, he's saying it resides in us, that you can know these things, these great mysteries. They can be revealed to us, those that know Christ. That you can walk forward in the power of who God is. First Corinthians two, nine, it says, but it is, as it is written, eye has not seen nor ear has heard nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. See, God reveals these things to us through his spirit that resides in us these deep things. It's like, I don't get deep things. I don't know if you know me or not, but I, I am not naturally a deep person. I don't naturally go down into the deep areas of study. But what these scriptures are telling me and telling us is that, is that it's not about you anyways, but by the spirit, these deep things are revealed. And in Psalms, it says, deep cries out to deep. Deep cries out to deep. What does that mean? Well, hey, I, I, I may not be that deep, but the spirit that resides in me is so deep. The spirit that resides in us knows those great mysteries and has that depth and can reveal to us those deep things because deep in me or in us is crying out to deep. 
in the heavenly realms. It's crying out. It's, it's there. It's, it's got that relationship and knows, even if we don't. So knowing that this revelation, it doesn't come from us. It comes from the deep inside of us, the Spirit of God residing in us. God, I don't know if I have the strength. I don't know if I have the power. I, I, I think that he's up there. Good, let me do it. Fine, I'm here. Why would you want to stand on your own power anyways? <laughs> deep cries out to deep. Like I said in Matthew 16, 19, he says, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We have to understand the authority that has been given to us. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just trying to encourage you and me at the same time that, that I know that each one of us, no matter where we're at, we have room to grow. I do. I'm saying, God, I'm at a certain level, but I know that I can't reach some final level. This isn't a game that you get to the end and there's like fireworks. It's not, it's not what, it ha what it is. God, please keep bringing me into deeper things. God, pre please keep revealing in me new things. God, allow me to be moved by your spirit, to be used in more and more of your power every single day. God, you, you've used me. You've, he's used us to do great things. But there's more. There's more to do. There's more to know. There's more people to show the love of God. So we ask him. So we say, God, just reveal to me by your spirit those things that you have for us. Let us know who you are. God, let us, let us rest in the comfort of your presence, but not be too comfortable that we don't move out and go do what you have us to do, what you want us to do, God. Let us move in your power. Why don't you stand with me?